Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have an ASUS TUF 815 FA506 gaming laptop. I'm going to take you on a teardown or disassembly tour so you can see all the various components after you open it up and safe ways to access them. So first thing guys, power down your computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then going to flip it over to access your bottom case screws. So you have these four screws on the bottom here, these three along the middle, and then these four up here. So remove all of your screws, guys. You'll notice this one down here for most of you will not be removable. You can unscrew it, but it'll stay in there, which is actually kind of nice because that gives you a little bit of lift on the bottom case to start off taking it off. You would then use a small flat, preferably plastic pry tool. I say plastic because metal pry tools tend to scratch your case a little bit. So use a small flat plastic pry tool to finish this off. Start over here and go around the edge of your bottom case until you can pry the whole bottom case off. Nice and slow but firm and don't put your pry tool too far in. You could damage some things when taking off a bottom case. Just keep it right on the edge and go nice and slow. After your bottom case is removed, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. As a general computer repair side note, guys, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, it is sitting on an anti-static pad. Either that or an anti-static bracelet go a long way to avoid damaging things in your computer when you're working on them. If you guys need any help with any tools or supplies for your computer project, as well as any replacement parts for this A15 FA506, there'll be a link above also below in the description where you can find all those tools and supplies and all the replacement and upgrade parts, your batteries, your storage, your RAM, any replacement parts for this computer. Now as a general rule of thumb, before I do anything inside a computer, I always remove or at least unplug the battery. It makes the computer a little safer to work on. To remove the battery, you have a screw right here near the left and a screw down here on the bottom near the corner. After removing those screws, your battery plugs into the motherboard right here. Now, as usual, I advise you to not pull on wires where you don't have to and instead manipulate the plug itself. So on a plug like this, you have a grip on either side. You'll use a small flat plastic pry tool and you can push on this side, push on that side, go back and forth until you've wiggled it out without pulling on the wires. Okay, so now that we've dealt with the battery, we can proceed deeper into the computer. The first thing I'll shout out is your RAM and your solid state drive, your memory and your storage. Uh, one of the most common components that people are looking at when they get in their computer. So the RAM is right here, solid state drive is right here. There's a black shield over both, but it just peels off. When you peel it off over your RAM, this is what you're looking at for RAM ports. You have two ports. And the way to access RAM, guys, there's a metal spring-loaded pry arm on either side of your RAM. To get the RAM out, you would pry those apart from each other gently away from the RAM stick. The RAM would then release. Oftentimes, it'll pop up a little bit, and you can grab it and slide it out of this port. To get the RAM stick back in, there's a long side of the RAM stick and a short side. So you can only plug it in the right way. You plug it in there, get it nice and flush, and then you press down in the middle and those metal arms will um, snap onto it and secure it in place. The solid state drive is over here. There's a black guard over that as well and a single screw holding that down. Once you undo that screw, you can slide the guard and the solid state drive right out of its port. And that's its port right there. That's where the solid state drive was uh, plugged into. So for both the solid state drive and the RAM, as well as all the other parts, guys, just a reminder, I, I will have in the link below a list of tools and parts and upgrade parts for this. And I'll have some upgrade suggestions for the RAM and solid state drive in that list. Next thing I'll shout out is right here. It was a little hidden Wi-Fi card under the solid state drive. So it's plugged into a similar looking port. And there's a single black screw here too. You undo that screw, your Wi-Fi card will release and you can unplug it from this port. The black and white wires plugged into it, those are just snaps. Those snap right off very easily. Those are your antenna wire that come down here to your antenna as well as the one on the other side. In addition to the solid state drive, I did forget to shout out right here, guys. Any of you that have gone in, into older computers before, you know what this is. This is a hard drive caddy. Um, so it comes already with one, but what that means is you can put a hard drive or a solid state drive here. Um, it has to be a SATA 
connection as opposed to the M.2 port here. So it would have to be SATA, a 2.5 inch drive, hard drive or solid state drive. And then you would need to purchase uh, the SATA connection so the ribbon cable can plug in right here on the motherboard in this empty port right there. That's where that would go. So that's kind of a cool little feature that you can add an additional drive here. The next thing I'll shout out are the speakers. You see this one here toward the left of my screen, this one here toward the right. They're not screwed down. They have these rubber washers that are for soundproofing. You can just wiggle these right off of those posts. This speaker is not plugged into the motherboard on this side. It's wires connected all the way here to this speaker. And then this speaker plugs into the motherboard right here. So just like the battery, again, you would press on either side of that plug to get it out with your fingernails or a pry tool, but you'd man manipulate the plug rather than pull on those wires. The next thing, guys, this is your LCD cable here. It goes through the fan, through this hinge assembly. So that's where your LCD cable is. If you're looking to replace that or reseat that, that's where that's located. Next thing are your fans. You get this fan on the right, this fan on the left. They are held down by a couple screws each. And then the wires come and plug into the motherboard here for the left one and here for the right one. And they look pretty similar to your speaker wires. Again, don't pull on the wire, but manipulate that plug. After that, you have your heat sink here. It goes from this vent and this vent over your CPU and GPU. Check out this um, warranty sticker or this caution sticker over that screw. You guys may see these from time to time in various parts of computers. What they do is when they see you've messed with that sticker, they know which section or all of your warranty to void. So just keep that in mind when going in for any computer repair, watch out for those. And if you don't wanna void your warranty, you may not wanna do any DIY past that point. To get at your CPU, GPU, there's four screws on each. You would remove those screws, release your heat sink, and you can get at those. If you're here as a side note to reapply thermal paste, I will have a video link above. Also, I'll have it below in the description. It's a quick tutorial on how to apply thermal paste. You definitely wanna clean all the old stuff off. You don't wanna put new thermal paste on top of old thermal paste, and you don't wanna to put too much on when you're reapplying it. So if, if you need that tutorial, it'll be down below in the, in the description. So that's the video, guys. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description. It could save you some time getting an answer. If you do need to leave me a question or comment, please do. I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. To support the channel, please remember to like and share. Subscribe if you enjoy this type of DIY tutorials. And for those of you that want to support the channel a little further, you can always leave a small donation. And there's a couple ways to do that. First, right below the video to the right hand side, you'll see the super thanks button. You can click on that. You can select a tip amount here. Second way, you can use your cash app. Find me at dollar sign PC helper. You can leave a dollar amount and you can even leave a little note. So thank you so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.